Hello and welcome to another episode of Views <laughs> from the Gilding. Okay, so if you're relatively new to this channel, I know I typically just review books, primarily science fiction, do book hauls, things like that. But um, one of my main hobbies is painting and I occasionally like to share it on here. So let's get on with it. So I haven't actually painted for about a month, but I was quite industrious um, a couple of months ago and I knocked out a few paintings and I've got some other ones that are works in progress. So I'll just very uh, quickly divvy them out and we can um, talk about them perhaps. Okay, so let's begin with this little number. So uh, my camera is absolutely crap. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll dip into some images in a bit. But anyway, this one was influenced, as you can probably imagine, by vintage science fiction book covers. But it initially began as a completely abstract form, which I then later made into this kind of almost a machine, or I would say. And we've also got a number there, 79, the year of my birth. So let's dip in and look at it a bit more closely. So this is how this particular painting began its life. Now, what I often do when I've finished a painting or when I've finished painting a particular section, if there's any paint left on the palette, I'll use it as a base coat for another painting. So I had a fair bit here. So in the center, these are kind of flesh tones because I was painting a figure, which I'll show you later. And I had a lot of red paint, so I daubed it on with a palette knife. So all of these marks that you see are from the palette knife scraping along the canvas. There was already a background of uh, this fairly luminous green. So everything kind of pops a bit. I wondered if it might be an abstract painting in its own right. It had something about it. I like there's a kind of energy here of some, some, kind, some kind of organic form trying to burst out. But no, it didn't quite do it for me. So I did this to it. So this is what I just showed you. So if I just swap between the two, you can see where I've carved it out, perhaps. So in these areas, I wanted to have this structure being recessed slightly. So these kind of more machine parts are almost, they're trying to contain it, I suppose. Um, and then there's these various um, designs that that are kind of reminiscent of vintage science fiction spaceships, I would say. But it's a deconstructed spaceship. But again, you've got quite a tactile quality to it. The actual surface of the paint's quite thick, so you can run your fingers lovingly across it if that's what you're into. Um, I quite like the fact as well that you can see some of the colours poking through this dark background. I was going to give it another layer just to really knock it back, but I quite like these bits poking out. Um, so I've called this one 79. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, on to the next. Okay, let's have a little bit of tea. Oh, lovely. Okay, let's do the next one. Um, so again, this one began life as another abstract image from the scrapings of one of my, of, of my palette. So this is far more science fiction-esque, I would say. Um, again, it could be a book cover, perhaps. Um, but yeah, I, I really like the way these two uh, light sources formed at the very beginning. And so I built it, built the composition around that. Uh, but anyway, let's dip in a bit closer and I'll show you what I did. Okay, so this was the very first daubing that I did. I did this all in one go from a blank canvas up to this point. So I had this luminous green and a fair amount of blue and red and I just slapped it on. So it was kind of a coincidence that I had these two light sources, this pro predominantly green one and this red one over here. So the next thing I did was just accentuate it. You don't really see much from these two changes, but I've I've added a light source here to the red red one. Um, and as you can see in the background, just by pure accident, there are structures here already, just, just by happenstance, really. Just the, the way the palette knives moved over the canvas. So the next one, I 
here I picked those various forms and, and kind of added a bit more detail, purely based on what I thought I could see of the underlying structure. There we are. Um, but yeah, just using a very dark uh, blue really for this section. I let that dry and then I just slapped on some green uh, highlights that are trying to pick up the central um, light source here. So it's it's twanging off various structures here that gives it slightly more 3D uh, quality to it, I would say. I also added this purple light source here and played around with it reflecting off these various structures. I mean, I just made it up as I went along. It's just a doodle, really. But um, yeah, it could almost pass for a, a vintage science fiction book cover. Perhaps, perhaps, I don't know. But anyway, there we are. There's that one. I haven't got a name for that one. Um, yeah, no idea. OK, onwards, onwards and upwards. This is the last one from the drying rack. Um, and as so often happens with my paintings, they end up looking like H.R. Geiger-esque compositions. So there we are, all red with a black design over the top. So, yeah, I'll show you again. My camera is terrible, so let's let's delve in and see where this came from. So for this one, I just had this predominantly red background. There's a bit of pink in there, you can see down here. Um, there wasn't much to go on structurally, but somehow I, I came up with this. This is a very thinned down paint, which I just daubed on and then rubbed off again, trying to get some kind of structure there. I had something in my mind actually for this one, but it didn't turn out the way I thought it would. So that was the underlying structure that I then went with and then did this over the top. So it doesn't really follow it too much other than these two, two kind of parallel lines that's preserved in this this next very rough rendering. I let that dry just one day and then I just did this. So I just put a bit more detail, a bit more tonal variation, knocking some bits back. So these bits in shadow and then highlights here. So for me, it looked like a window. So this is a, a view of the outside. It may be on its side, I'm not quite sure at this point. Um, but yeah, it's still very rough at this point. Incidentally, um, just thinking about it now, so you can see the weave of the canvas here. This is something I really enjoy playing with these days. I, I like the I like this underlying texture. But when when I first started painting I absolutely hated it because it was something that was imposed on the painting that I couldn't control but and that was coming from like from a drawing background where you'd have a pristine surface depending on the coarseness of the paper you're using you wouldn't get much of this happening although it was even then it was influencing the drawing but now I just really like it um, anyway there we are there's an incidental little tidbit this is still not finished. This is still just a fairly basic underlying um, drawing. You could call it a drawing, really, and it will inform the next phase. I have no idea how it's going to turn out, um, but yeah, no idea. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. OK, onwards. Mm. OK, that's it for the smaller ones. Now I've got a, a square one now. This is a slightly larger one. So here we are. Um, again, I don't know what this one's called, but I've done a couple like this now, kind of 3D or 3D-esque um, arrangements. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this one. Anyway, let's um, delve in and I'll talk about it. Okay, here we go. So I began again, I, I didn't do the, the, the initial abstract canvas, but you can, you can see it here, really. It was predominantly blue and uh, pink. And the, it had these really pleasing patterns that were formed from the palette knife itself. And that was by altering the speed that I dragged the palette knife across the canvas. 
if you get just the right speed, it will it will kind of vibrate almost and create these little dots and little grooves and things. Absolutely lovely. Um, I completely embrace uh, things now that I can't control, because I if you were to try to recreate this painstakingly, it would take you forever and it wouldn't look as natural as this. Anyway, I saw again an underlying structure and I just used a it's kind of a glaze really so i just created a dark color some um, phalo blue a bit of burnt umber um it's more or less black at that point thinned it down with some linseed oil and just blocked it out so you get a bit of transparency because it's a glaze um and then yeah i thought yeah these are buildings of sorts so then i then overlaid this now i must say i personally don't like how bright the these lights are these these green things um, and part way through painting it I didn't really like it <laughs> but there's nothing I could do at that point so I, I grudgingly finished it but what I'm tempted to do perhaps is to tone it down so again using a glaze and knock this back a bit because I think there was something about this that seemed kind of monumental and now this seems almost like a childlike in a way um i don't know again it could be a vintage um commodore 64 game cover perhaps there's something about that is slightly quirky um but i think i prefer the original there but anyway there we are that's what happened i also quite liked this texture that was achieved on the side of these blocks that looks kind of like roughly hewn stone um, and I did that purely just by sweeping the brush, um, flicking it around a bit. So yeah, you can see this, this, this is imperfect. It took me bloody ages to do it and, and gave my wrist a damn good thrashing, which I didn't appreciate. Um, but again, once you've committed to something and you have to follow it through, it can be quite a brutal thing to, uh, to do. But anyway, there we are. What do you think of that? Should I tone down this luminous lime green or should I leave it as it is and chuck it out of the fucking window? Let me know down in the comments. Right, um, the next one I'm going to show you is an abomination. I've spent hours on it and it looks bloody awful. And I don't even know which way it up it goes, so that's not a good sign. I'm going to put it this way up just for shits and giggles. So this was going to be a background for a painting I was going to do for my friend and friend of the channel, Chris Cullen, but it didn't actually turn out the way I imagined it would, um, as so often these things um, do happen like that. <clears throat> I can't bloody talk today. It now looks slightly dodgy. It looks like a great big, um, what do you call it? Fanny. <laughs> Okay, so this was the original painting um, and this, as you can probably imagine, it took me bloody ages. I don't think it goes that way. I think it's that way. Yeah. Now, the thing that annoyed me about this when I finished painting it was that I did it all. I didn't plan it. I just started painting, basically. And the annoying thing is, you can probably see already. So. This part here where I started this curve is more or less in the center of the canvas, but the point here isn't. So the problem is your eye is led to that line between them, which isn't centered on the canvas. And that's very annoying. So what I did was the next phase, which I've just shown you the actual painting, I've done that to it. Wait a minute, I need to rotate this one as well. There we are. So I've put on these things that are making it look slightly dodgy. Um, it looks like, I suppose, forceps um, aiding a birth, perhaps. <laughs> but the, the idea was to, to make this opening slightly smaller and push it more to the left to center it a bit more. I think it has achieved that, uh, but, uh, but making it slightly sordid at the same time. These black bits that I've painted over are just underpainting, so I'm going to go over that with quite a light colour just to accentuate these forms. It's a very dark painting, so it looks okay when you've got a bright light over it, as, as this is, as I photographed it, which is why you're getting a lot of um, shimmer over here. You can't really odds that. 
So I really need to make brighten, brighten it up once I overpaint these um, forceps areas. <laughs> God knows what I'm going to call this. This is another painting that may end up being slung out of the window. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, so just one more painting that's, well, one of these smaller abstract ones. So this one here. So this one is like a stack of, I don't know, metal tubes, perhaps. Um, no idea what this is um, or what it will become because this isn't finished. But once again, I'll show you where this one began and it began in a very strange way. Okay, so this painting began life as this. Now, again, I thought this might be a painting in its own right. And it had, um, it, I've shown it on the channel before. It kind of reminds me of, I don't know, like Japanese Tori gates, perhaps. They're often red in color, but it also references the kind of line marking that you find in woodblock prints. So the way I painted this was, so I, I started off with a completely black canvas, let that dry, and then I used a palette knife to apply these red marks, which took a very long time because I had to kind of control the way it, it sat on the canvas. Then once I'd finished, I then took um, some um, odorless thinner and cut out these grooves just to give some more structure to the overall shape. So there's a definite, there's a structure to this, isn't there? And I really found that pleasing, but I didn't know what to do with it. Again, I thought this might be a background that I could use for another painting for Chris. Um, but as it happened, um, I didn't do that. And instead I did this. So I turned it into all these bloody tubes, which again took bloody ages. So I did that by, I did a glaze of green over the whole thing and then rubbed off sections so that we, I was quite pleased by it actually. So we've got this combination of, of red and green, which are nice complementary pairings of colors anyway. And then added all these extra little details just to give it a slightly more, well, a cylindrical form, shall we say, to accentuate that. But again, I didn't like it. So I ended up doing this to it. So this, that's the stage it's at now. Um, and so you can see here in the paint, the underlying part of the painting that I've blocked out. I must say that blocking this out was a very pleasing activity. I really love cutting stuff out with paint. Um, and it's made this interesting arrangement, a kind of pile of objects. Who knows what these objects are? I mean, I have no idea and I painted the damn thing. I'm thinking that something will be sitting up here, some kind of perhaps a circle. I'm not quite sure. Perhaps a figure. Um, I've also uh, played with the ideas of maybe cables coming out of these and feeding up into some structure at the, at the top. Again, I'm heavily influenced by science fiction, so it may end up looking like some kind of alien artifact. Uh, but there we are. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Okay, so there's just one last one to show you. Mm. I've shown this one on here before, and it's a naughty one. Um, and I haven't had time to censor it, so I'm going to have to put my hand in the way. Because at the moment, um, it's quite obscene. So if I put my hand there. Right. <laughs> Let's just say I've painted it anatomically correct. So at the moment... Yeah, it's, 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 um, this would not be allowed on YouTube, I imagine. But anyway, I'm quite pleased with how it's going. So this one's called Maypole. Um, and I planned this a couple of years ago. I wanted to do it in time for spring. That never happened. I didn't even make spring for this year. Uh, but there's still lots to do. Um, and I'm going to talk about that um, on, on this other... Um, I'm going to talk about that. I can't, I can't, I can't talk today. I'm going to show you now what I'm hoping to do uh, to it. Okay, so here we are. I've, I've actually put a censored stamp on there, so there's no problems. This is a photograph of the one I just showed you. It's a bit bleached out because I didn't, couldn't photograph it as well as I wanted. Um, but I would say this portion of the painting is more or less done. 
I may employ some glazes to, because this is all one, one layer, all these flesh tones I did in one painting, uh, one session, shall we say. Um, and it might need smoothing out slightly. Um, I'm not sure. Some of the light sources might need accentuating. I don't know. But the main thing to do is, <laughs> that looks really dodgy. I need to put in the shadow here. So the light source is quite bright. It's coming from the right side. So I need to get some kind of shadow in here. So I'm going to do that as a glaze first of all. And then what I want is a lot of vegetation here. And that's going to take a very long time. Um, and it's and the reason I haven't done it yet is because I know it's going to be difficult and I don't want to mess it all up. So I'm thinking lots of maybe wild flowers or something of that nature, maybe weeds even. And that's why I've left this area because it will probably obscure that area. Um, but who knows? I, I, I'll make a decision at the time. So there we are. There's that one. Um, I'm doing that one purely for my own interest, shall we say, or own practice, really. Um, and I've got a great big frame that it's going to sit in. So there we are. That's it for now. And yes, I hope you enjoyed that. I don't have any of these on eBay at the moment, but I will get them on there at some point. But I just thought I'd show you all before they go on there. Um, and if there's any you're interested in, let me know and I'll, I'll put it back for you. And they're very cheap as well. Well, relatively cheap, I would say. I normally sell them for like £40 each, 30 or £40, something like that. So, um, yeah, case by case, I'll have to see. Depend it's, it's an absolute shambles, to be honest. I haven't sold a single painting this year. And this isn't a cry for help. I don't really care whether they sell or not. Um, but it's interesting because last year I sold, I don't know, quite a few, 20 of them or so, maybe. Uh, but this year, there's no interest whatsoever. It's just interesting, really. Uh, but there we are. That's not a cry for help, okay? So I know, you, I know you don't, you're not influenced by that kind of thing anyway, hopefully. Um, uh, buy them. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay, there we are. Right, let's leave it there. I will be back soon with a, what am I going to do next? Oh, I've got some new books coming. So there may be a, a, a book haul coming soon. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting, hopefully. Until next time, dear viewers, I will bid you good day and cheerio.